Today is going to be an awesome day. We finally have two complete generations of Piston Cup racers. All of the stock cars from Cars 1 and all of the stock cars from Cars 3. And today we're going to be doing a comparison of all of them. And that is a total of at least 72 individual racers. So I cannot wait to get into this. I mean, just look how amazing they look right now in front of you guys. So many colors, so many cool designs. And yeah, just a couple months ago, Mattel released the final stock car we needed, which was the Easy Idol Cars 3 stock car, Carl Clutch. And he was the last piece to the puzzle to allow us to now make this video and kind of go through and see how things changed over the 12 year period between Cars 1 and Cars 3. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So first, we're actually going to talk about the seven racers from Cars 1 that do not have counterparts in Cars 3, meaning that their sponsors do not sponsor another racer in the third movie. And of course, I'm sure the one everybody is aware of is Chick Hicks, sponsored by Hostile Takeover Bank. So although Chick does appear in Cars 3, Hostile Takeover Bank is nowhere to be seen. So Perhaps it went out of business or something like that. Maybe it was taken over by another bank. And we'll talk about that in a little bit here because seven new sponsors kind of came in and took the place of these ones that were lost. And some of them do have connections. So we'll get to that in a moment here. Um, next, we have Shifty Drug, real name Kevin Racing Tire. This one, I'm all right with it leaving, although the pink and yellow was an interesting paint scheme. Here we have Slider Petrowski, sponsored by Sidewall Shine. Another one that I'm okay with kind of dissipating. One that's another interesting one like Chick Hicks is Dale Earnhardt Jr., sponsored by Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. And I understand why this one kind of went off as well because it was one of these more cameos than like an actual created sponsor, I guess you could say. Now these last two here, I have no idea why they got rid of actually last three. Especially this one. This is a fan of favorite Greg Candyman sponsored by Taco Mint. He is my favorite sponsor of all time just because of how unique he is. And I want to eat him every time because he looks like a gingerbread house. So it's really too bad he was lost. Same thing with Retread here. Hauling Gas. Love that lavender shade. And last but not least is Brush Kerber sponsored by Fiber Fuel. Now... This is a great segue into the seven new racers that were introduced in the Cars 3. We have first off Synergy. Now Synergy and Fiber Fuel are very similar. They're both organic fuels. So you know perhaps Synergy came in flashy and they kind of kicked Fiber Fuel out of business. At least that's you know how I'm thinking about it in my head. And this guy's name is Lane Locke. Same thing possibly with Combustor here, another online banking and perhaps maybe the internet, you know, as it says there, the power of online banking instead of maybe having to do it in person or in car, I guess you could say. And that's why it maybe kicked out Hostile Takeover Bank, even though Hostile Takeover sounds pretty aggressive. Now these other ones don't really correlate to the sponsors that were lost, like Intersection here, it's like a dating website. So probably nothing to do with that. Triple Dent here. This is Spearmint Flavored Dent Filter. Again, I don't know, maybe, um, no, maybe Retread? Because that's like tire deodorant. I don't know, maybe something there, but probably not. Carbon Cyber is another bank, I believe, actually. They don't say it on here, but I do believe he is a bank. By the way, Triple Den, his name is Terry Cargas. Intersection is Jimmy Cables. And this guy is Bobby Road Testa. And to conclude the new sponsors from Cars 3, here is Blinker, aka Speedy Comet. And this is another social media platform. As you can see there on the hood, it says connecting engine 
two engines, so possibly like Twitter or something along those lines. So now that we got those out of the way, we can get into the comparisons here. We're just gonna start with what's in front of us here. Carl Clutchin versus Ruby Easy Oak, sponsored by Easy Idle. Now I've reviewed all of these cars for the most part, maybe with one exception of the four wheel drive cars one racer, but pretty much all these cars have been reviewed at least one sometimes I even review them twice so search them up on my channel I'll put some in the description and the card suggestion if you want to check those out but we're gonna try and go through these rather quickly because otherwise we'll be here all day long and you guys get the point you know if you want to see in-depth reviews that'll be on my channel in the appropriate reviews here we have tank coat Eugene Karbareski from Cars 1 versus Rev Meeker from Cars 3. Probably, you know, along with these, the idle, the paint jobs really did not change a whole lot. Whereas with a vinyl toupe here, oh my gosh, they changed insanely. You got Krusty Roeder from Cars 1 with this lavender shade, and now no lavender whatsoever on the new Rev Rothages. I have to say, both look fantastic though, despite the insane difference here we have shiny wax another one that did not change a whole lot we have darren leadfoot and darren leadfoot some of these racers are the same character even though their models are different i don't know why pixar decided to you know carry them over to the following movie but you know i guess it could make sense that they have an you know extremely long racing career for at least you know a couple here we have Manny Flywheel versus Parker Brakeston for N2O Cola. The paint job stayed pretty much the same with a slight change in the purple and green shades though. I really do like this sponsor though, I have to say. It's a very nice one. N2O Cola has a very soft spot in my heart because of how I remember getting him when I was a kid. Here we have RPM. On the right is the Cars 1. Winford, Bradford, Rutherford, and on the left we have simply Bruce Miller here. I have to say Bruce looks great. And another racer where the paint job stayed pretty much the same. Just kind of change up the you know order of the colors essentially. And now on to Trunk Fresh here, Dirksen Diagostino. So this is an, again one of those racers that stayed throughout both of the movies. Now the paint jobs did change up a little bit here, but you still got black and green two-tone going on. This is Cars 1, by the way, and that is Cars 3. Up next, we have No Stall, Todd Marcus. Yet again, another character that stayed throughout both movies. And this, you know, is a pretty drastic change. You went from red and black to now red, turquoise, blue, and white. So I have to say... Quite a big change there, and Ty Marcus from Cars 3 is one of my favorite stock cars from the third movie. I just, I don't know, I like the mix of all those colors, without a doubt. And we're going to go over to my left side here. I got cars all over the place. We got Ponchi Wipeout, and I do want to show both variations of the racer for Cars 3. You got yellow rims and black rims, and then this is the Cars 1 version. And we just keep on going with our streak of racers that stayed throughout both movies Ponchi wipeout what a guy and yeah you know i keep saying this but the paint jobs did not change a whole lot the yellow rims was definitely an interesting choice that is accurate to the movie this you know surprisingly is not but he should have blue eyelids though that is kind of a mistake on mattel's part but the yellow rims are not that is actually you know how they're supposed to be Moving on now, who should we go with? I'm thinking Nitroway, the classic here. So we got Aiken Axler from Cars 1 on the left and Phil Tankson on the right from Cars 3. And in my personal opinion, this is the paint job that is almost identical to the previous version. I mean, just look at the patches on the side there. Maybe a little bit different on the roof, but overall, these guys are very, very similar. I'm not necessarily complaining. I mean, sometimes it's nice to have that consistency. Hmm, we're not going to go to Lightning McQueen just yet. I'm thinking more little torquey pistons over here. Ralph Carlo, one of those that stayed the same. Now, definitely a lot lighter blue for sure. 
And yeah, he's actually quite a bit different. But still, you know, you got your little cute little torquey piston in there. One of my favorite things from the Cars universe, that guy. They should really make like him or make like him as an accessory in something. That'd be pretty sweet. And who we got next? I'm thinking Transberry Juice over here. Again, one of the bigger changes out of all the stock cars. On the right, you got Lee Revkins from Cars 1. On the left, you got Marcus Krangsler from Cars 3. So this is actually a number change. I forgot to mention with Easy Idle, his number was flipped. And you know, if you wanna know why, check out my video on him. I explain all the reasons. Same thing with a Marcus here as to why he dropped the three and lost a lot of that purple as well. The purple is much darker on Marcus than it was on Lee. All right, let's go on to Murray Clutchburn over here. This guy is the same. Paint job, relatively similar, but I do have to say I like Murray in Cars 3 a lot with those turquoise rims. Really looks nice. So while we're going through these guys, really consider what is your favorite racer from all the movies? I mean, we got a lot to pick from here. I mean, the king and his own nephew, Cal Weathers, or Hank, as he was originally called. But yeah, this is a pretty cool comparison for sure. But yeah, I don't know about my personal favorite. I love them all so much. And I mean, I have to always revert to Lightning McQueen just because he is the main character. He's gotta be my favorite, right? And here are all three paint jobs of McQueen as a stock car. We got Cars 1, Cars 3 Beginning, and Cars 3 End. So pretty self-explanatory, not a whole lot to say about him. Moving on now to Ernie Aguirreson, who has always been sponsored by Spearmint. We don't have like another racer in between there before the next gen. This guy did change quite a bit. He is one of my favorite stock cars from Cars 3. I love his expression because it really differs from all the others, you know, having that worried expression. The white rims look great. I love the big emphasis on the leaves. I don't know, it's just kind of something unique about him along with the tires on his hood there. So that's pretty cool. Moving on now to Johnny Blamer, sponsored by Foveal Drive in the first Cars movie and then by Tommy Highbanks in the second or third. You know what? Cars 2 doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Cars 1 and Cars 3 are really the two movies in the franchise and Cars 2 is just like an extended Mater's Tall Tale. I did love it though, but you know, Cars 3 is basically Cars 2. But anyway, the designs are pretty similar here as well. You got the forest backgrounds on each of them. Just a little bit more blue on Johnny. All right, moving on now to Clutch Aid. We got Kevin Shift right here on the left and then Dino Drafsky on the right. This guy changed quite a bit for sure. You know, got rid of that dark blue, which I personally never liked. I like him a lot more now with the lighter blue, the more white. He looks great. I love the Band-Aid design as well. And even that little nice hint of green trim on his rims. All right, so here's Revolting. On the left is Dave Alternators, also known as Davey Apex. And on the right, TG Castlenut. Now this is actually one of the rarest stock cars from Cars 3. He was only releasing a Target exclusive four pack a year and a half ago. So yeah, not many distributions there basically, you know, being in a four pack, especially for people outside the United States. I know Australia, I think maybe some places in the UK GOM as well. The designs are pretty similar though. Not a whole lot to say. Octane Gain, one of the biggest changes for sure, going from orange to purple. And of course he now is a main character being Bobby Swift. He did get quite a few speaking lines in Cars 3, whereas Billy Oil Changer in Cars 1 was just a background character. Also a number change, you know, if you wanna know why, definitely check out my previous videos on him, but it's just because for a lot of these, it's cause the next gens are voiced by real life NASCAR drivers and they wanted the numbers to be the same as their ones in real life. So that means they also had to change the stock car numbers from the first movie. Up next, we got Mood Springs. 
Chuck Armstrong on the left from Cars 1 and Doug Throttleman on the right from Cars 3. I have to say I love both of these guys. They are fantastic. I do prefer Dud though. I just like the more lively blue. The dark blue is just a little drab. A little too depressing for me. And last but not least for this row here is Gasprin, Floyd Mulvey Hill, in and out. One of the most overlooked stock cars, at least in my opinion, from Cars 3. He only was released in a launcher and everyone just kind of forgot about him, it seems. And the design did change quite a bit. You went from those like rounded pills, these spheres, to you know more circular oval ones, which is interesting for sure. Hopefully he does get a re-release eventually though, for those who couldn't get him in the launcher. All right, Ravengo. Now this is the only stock car that does not have a name. I don't know why Mattel did not name this guy. They just call him Ravengo Racer in that Target exclusive 11 pack a year and a half ago. So yeah, he is also a pretty rare stock car. And this is Misty Motorcraft from Cars 1, the only female racer. So it's potentially you know, possible that this is also a female racer if they want to kind of include that Easter egg. But yeah, the designs are you know decently similar. I'm running out of space on my table here. This is ridiculous. Here we have Leakless now, another classic. Claude Scruggs on the right from Cars 1 and Brian Spark on the left from Cars 3. Also only available in the launcher. Now these designs are pretty different in the fact that the drip aspect is much more emphasized on Brian that is on Claude. I still love them both though. I mean, Leakless is a classic sponsor for sure. Love the white and yellow two-tone. We're just gonna put them back there. I'm running out of room. Move on to gaskets. Don't worry, I didn't forget Apple, but we have Sage Vanderspin on the left from Cars 1 and Rex Reveler on the right from Cars 3. Major change is the fact that the blue is quite a bit darker now. They also removed the slogan from the hood and the actual picture of the little cookie, which I'm a little disappointed about. They still do include it on the back corners though. And they do put the slogan on the spoiler, but I do wish it was also on the hood. But I guess, you know, as times progressed, they wanted to make things simpler. And I can understand that. Here we have Vitaline. Also kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't say a main character, but a supporting character in Cars 3, Brick Yardley. He did have a line. James Clean Air in Cars 1. He was just pretty much a background character. Quite a bit more of a vibrant, brighter green, but still, you know, you got that two-tone going on between green and white. I like the green rims, though. They stand out. Up next, we got View Z, sticking with our Vs here. Ryan Shields from Cars 1 on the right and Buck Baringly from Cars 3 on the left. Again, you know, pretty similar designs. You got the yellow orangish for the number and then you got a turquoise for the rest. I've been talking about Vuzine a lot lately because I reviewed Michael Roeder, then I reviewed the custom Vuzine hauler. So yeah, we've been really, you know, promoting Vuzine lately, those corrective windshields, man. Yeah, I mean, they even kept the slogans in the exact same positions. This is another, you know, really similar one. And last, before we get to Apple, we have Toe Cap here, the Hitch Protector. Again, you know, similar designs for sure. You just have a little bit darker purple, I'd say, or maybe, I don't know if it's darker, but you can definitely tell it's more of a purple than a blue. They did remove the slogan that Toe Cap originally had, which is probably for the best. Number four still. And that is pretty much it. We're gonna move on to Apple now, who, as you guys know, Mattel only released the Cars 1 Apple in the Motor Speedway of the South set, that huge, you know, 36 car set, only available to Redline Club members in 2008 and now is probably one of the most sought after items in the cars hobby. So yeah, he's pretty rare, and because of the fact that they made the Apple car so rare for the first movie, they probably won't even release the stock car from Cars 3, and if they do, 
He'll be extremely rare, trust me. He'll definitely be one of the most sought after cars ever. I don't see them doing another like Motor Speedway of the South set though. However, if they were to do it, this would be the year. Two years after the film release, which is how they did it back for Cars 1. And because of that, we don't know this guy's name from Cars 3, so if you wanna come up with a name, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm thinking something, you know, to honor Steve Jobs, I think that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, of course we got, you know, simplistic designs, as it all is for Apple. I love my Apple products without a doubt. Font changed a little bit for the number. Very, very cool. So that is it, believe it or not. We went through everybody, everybody. That was a lot of stock cars. That was like almost 80, I believe, individual cars. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing it. You know, it's kind of nice to take a break from reviews for a little bit and do something that's a little different, a little out of the box where you can just kind of, I don't know, look at all your cars, really appreciate them. Because I feel like in today's world, we're always like, you know, trying to get that next new car. And once we get it, we put it on the shelf and then we worry about the next new car and then the next one. And we don't have much time to really focus on, you know, what we've gotten already. We really gotta appreciate that. So, whoa, that's what I wanted to do with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was long, but you know, it's just one of those videos maybe you could listen to in the background while you're getting ready for school. That's what I do for a lot of my YouTube watching. But anyways, I will see you guys next time. I got a huge video plan for either next weekend or the weekend after that. Like it's absolutely insane. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for it. It's a huge project, I've been working on it. So look forward to that and I'll see you guys then. Bye now.